genre that has a lot to offer. So, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, so it's on to me for the uh, number one. Yes, what do you got? Surprises. Well, this is going to be no surprise to you, sir, but (laughs) my number one horror film of all time is the original Hellraiser. Yes. Um, It's the original Hellraiser, man. I think the original Hellraiser is... I think it's the greatest horror film ever made. Uh, that's, you know, that, that's me, man. I think, it, I mm. think the original Hellraiser is the greatest horror film ever made. How can you say it, Jake? How can you say that? Blasphemy, blasphemy. Yeah. You mean it's so I was better wondering than where, where it was going to fall for you. Jake, you, you mean to tell me that Hellraiser is better than the exorcist, the shining it's better than, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street is better than Halloween. Yes. Yes. Fuck yes. Hellraiser is better than The Exorcist. It's better than The Shining. It's better than Rosemary's Baby. It's better than Halloween. It's better than Nightmare on Elm Street. It's better than any fucking horror movie you can throw at me. Hellraiser, the original Hellraiser from 1987 is the best. It's the best horror film of all time. Um, If you're not familiar, you've certainly seen the pinhead character. If nowhere else than your local party city or Halloween store as a mask. He's the, you know, uh, pale faced bald dude with a bunch <laughs> of pins coming out of his head. Uh, he, a lot of people. Exactly. Uh, the film concerns sexual deviant Frank, who inadvertently opens a portal to hell when he tinkers with a box he bought while abroad. The act unleashes gruesome beings called Cenobites who tear Frank's body apart. Uh, When Frank's brother and his wife, uh, yeah, when Frank's brother and his wife, Julia, move into Frank's old house, they accidentally bring what is left of Frank back to life. Frank then convinces Julia, his one time lover, to lure men back to the house so he can use their blood to reconstruct himself. I think mm-hmm. what that description leaves out is that not only that, but he also has to figure out how he's going to get away from the uh, aforementioned demonic Cenobites who are hot, right. on, his, hot on his trail. Right. Um, <laughs> and th- what a fucking, I mean, just as I read it, what a great plot. What an amazing plot. I mean, what a great idea. Um, it's based on a novel by Clive Barker. Um called The Hellbound Heart and Clive Barker also directed the film. He made the film. He was an author. This was his first film that he ever directed. Incredible. I mean, what what an amazing job. The the when you watch this movie, I mean, it's it's made with the craft that William Friedkin made Exorcist uh with which Roman Polanski made Rosemary's Baby. Uh, John Carpenter made Halloween. It's made with that level of craft from a first time director, which is incredible. I mean, it's, that's amazing to me when I watch this movie, I can't believe that a first time director is doing such an amazing job with the lighting, the shots, the, you know, just the presentation of visual information. It's incredible. And, um, one of the greatest scenes in all of horror cinema to me is when our, <clears throat> you know, it, they, it does that kind of thing where it head hops with protagonists. So midway through the film, Kirsty, who is the brother, um, you know, the, not the guy in the attic, but the, his brother's daughter. Right. Um, so the evil guy's niece basically becomes the de facto main character <clears throat> midway through the film when she accidentally opens the puzzle box and the Cenobites emerge and we are seeing them, they get their first scene. We see glimpses of them early in the film. So again, it's like Jaws. It keeps them under wraps for very, very long. And then finally you get the big sort of reveal and the way they introduce themselves to her and present themselves and the way Clive Barker presents them with the lighting and the, you know, the... <laughs> you know, the, you know, and the and the fog, you know, swirling around, and the just ethereal sort of ghostly lighting of the scene, and 
pinhead in all of his glory just standing there saying you know the box you opened it we came you know it's like holy (laughs) shit this is awesome man um in my opinion it's the greatest horror film ever made it uh did i say that once or twice it's um yeah it 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 has everything it has the chills the suspense and the gore and the body horror but it's done it's all in service of a fantastic story and when people talk about this movie as if it's some gore fest that has no meaning to the madness i question their sanity i question whether we watched the same film uh and i i to be quite honest, I think they're fucking crazy when, when I hear that. Or I don't think they're crazy. I think that's crazy when I right. hear that. Um, and it spawned, you know, dubious sequels. The second film, I think, is pretty damn good. Um, the following sequels, I haven't even bothered with because they're, you know, like any horror franchise, just got dumber and dumber. And uh, it spawned a, a great franchise, though, in other forms of media. Um, Clive wrote a follow-up novel, which I thought was decent. I didn't really love what he did with the mythology in the follow-up novel, but I still thought the story itself on its own was decent. And the comic books are awesome, too. Um, I think the <clears throat> if you discount, besides the original film and the original novel, Hellraiser is at its best in comic book form. Like That was a story that was made for comics, and there are mm-hmm. great Hellraiser comics, and they do mm-hmm. awesome things with the story in those that they just never were given the chance to do on film. They attempted to in the second one in Hellbound and succeeded in some ways, I think, yeah. with more of a grand story, an epic set in hell, but um, yeah, I will always love this film, and, and I'll vouch for it till the end. I'll die I on know. that hill. You're, 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 <laughs> you are the biggest Hellraiser defender there. You know, you know, and you're, you know my interactions with these films. If somebody who's seen the first one, the second one, and the latest one, um, these are films that I 100% respect and have yeah. so much appreciation for it, despite the fact that I cannot, you know, in, in within me, there is not the, the as much love and appreciation for this film as there is within you. Sure, but I do, I do love these movies. I do love these movies regardless, and I think they're actually pretty great, despite my despite my bashing of them sometimes through the years. Especially yeah. when I first saw them, I know that you you and I maybe had like some kind of back and forth about them. But I do, I do have a lot of appreciations for these films, and they've grown on me. I want to see, I want to rewatch the first one and two again just to kind of see where I'm at with those films. Um, Cause I do, um, I do think about those movies often, just knowing how much appreciation you have for them. Yeah. And That's as good, the man. process of elimination I, continued, I knew it was like, this is going to be Jake's number one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you knew it was coming. You felt, you yeah. felt it, you felt it coming. Yeah. Of course, like when I got to the top three and it still wasn't there, you were probably like, Oh, it's gotta be number one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, I was just hey. wondering like where funny games are gonna fall for you. I was like, it's either gonna be one or two. You know, it's like it depends on where funny games is. If funny games is two, then then Hellraiser's one. And if funny there's just two, then funny games is one. I yeah. knew that, that was gonna be um part of the case. Yeah. And the way I talk about the original Hellraiser, the way I talk about it, if you're unfamiliar with it, which most people are familiar with what Hellraiser is, I mean I may I almost talk about it as if it's a cult classic, but it's it's not. It, it is a very well known horror film. I mean, Pinhead is, you know, if the Mount Ru- if there was a Mount Rushmore of horror villains and it was more than four, you know, because of course on your Mount Rushmore it's pretty much like Freddy, Jason, Michael, and probably Leatherface or Chucky, mm-hmm. or, or you know, you could interchange that last one, that fourth one mm-hmm. between like Leatherface, Chucky, or Ghostface, maybe. Um, but if you had like six, seven faces on there, Pinhead's definitely on on there. You know, it's it is a well it is a well loved franchise. You know, it is a mm-hmm. very famous franchise. It's up there. Um, <clears throat> although I don't think it really belongs with the slashers. Um, I can understand why it does because the sequels after two uh, went in that direction. But the first two Hellraiser films 
do not function as slashers mm-hmm. at all, at all. Mm-hmm. Um, no, no, absolutely. 